A single company's stock shot up 163% in one day by selling fake meat. By 2018, animal agriculture was producing more greenhouse gases than all the world's transportation combined. But a group of scientists wasn't trying to fix transportation or energy. They were trying to reinvent meat itself. And Wall Street bet billions they would succeed. This isn't just another story about a startup's rise and fall. It's about a fundamental question facing humanity. Can technology solve our biggest environmental challenges? And more importantly, will consumers let it? Today, we're exploring how the fake meat industry rose so rapidly, why it faced unexpected challenges, and what its future might look like in a world increasingly concerned about climate change, health, and food security. The numbers were becoming impossible to ignore. Animal agriculture was consuming 77% of global farmland while providing only 18% of our calories. And with global meat consumption expected to double by 2050, something had to give. Meanwhile, a new generation of consumers was emerging, one that cared deeply about their health and the planet's health. While 72% of millennials said they wanted to eat less meat, they weren't willing to give up the taste. Previous vegetarian options hadn't cracked this code, but something new was about to change everything. To understand why fake meat is so complex, we need to dive into what makes meat, meat. Real meat is a complex structure of muscle fibers, fat cells, and proteins that create its distinctive texture. When you bite into a burger, thousands of these fibers break apart, releasing compounds that create that distinctive meaty flavor. Plant-based meat companies had to reverse engineer this experience. They use pea or soy proteins for structure, coconut or sunflower oil for juiciness, and beet juice for color. But the real breakthrough came in flavor chemistry. Impossible Foods discovered that a molecule called heme was responsible for meat's distinctive taste. While animals produce heme in blood, the company found a way to produce it by fermenting genetically engineered yeast, similar to brewing beer. This single discovery cost over $50 million in research. Beyond Meat took a different approach. They developed a process that forces plant proteins through a complex heating and cooling system under extreme pressure. This transforms them into meat-like fibers that mimic muscle tissue. The machinery for this process costs millions per production line. This helps explain why alternative proteins are so expensive. A traditional burger needs one main ingredient, beef. A plant-based burger requires dozens of ingredients, each needing separate processing. And cultivated meat currently costs about $50 per pound to produce. But there's reason for optimism. The cost of cultivated meat has dropped by 99% since 2013. Plant-based companies are finding more efficient ways to process ingredients, and new technologies are emerging that could revolutionize production. The potential was staggering. The global meat market is worth $1.7 trillion. Capturing even a small slice of that would mean billions in revenue. For venture capitalists, the math was simple. If fake meat could capture just 10% of the market, it would create several billion-dollar companies. Early investors included billionaires like Bill Gates, Leonardo DiCaprio, and tech luminaries from Google and Twitter. They weren't just betting on a product, they were betting on a fundamental shift in human behavior. When Beyond Meat went public in 2019, it wasn't just the year's most successful IPO, it was a signal that Wall Street believed the future of food was about to change. But scaling a food revolution proved harder than scaling software. Unlike traditional meat producers who simply cut and grind meat, plant-based companies must transform their ingredients through complex processes. Each Beyond Meat facility costs around $400 million to build. Impossible Foods spent nearly $700 million developing its production capabilities. The math was sobering. While a pound of ground beef requires about $1 in processing costs, plant-based alternatives need $4 to $5 in processing alone. Add in marketing, distribution, and retail margins, and you begin to understand why that fake burger costs so much more than the real thing. 
Retailers faced their own challenges. Plant-based meat required specialized handling, had shorter shelf lives, and took up valuable cold case space. When sales growth slowed, many stores began reducing their plant-based offerings. This created a vicious cycle. Less shelf space meant less visibility, which meant lower sales. The industry faced a crucial question. Would consumers pay premium prices for alternative proteins? The science of alternative proteins also sparked intense debate about nutrition. Plant-based meats are processed foods by definition. They have to be to mimic meat structure, but they typically contain less saturated fat and no cholesterol. Cultivated meat is biochemically identical to conventional meat but can be engineered to be healthier. The fake meat industry isn't dying, it's evolving. Companies are pursuing three distinct strategies that could reshape the future of food. Traditional meat companies like Tyson and Cargill are betting on hybrid products, blending plant proteins with conventional meat. It's a clever strategy. These products are cheaper to produce, have better texture, and crucially, they're helping consumers transition gradually rather than asking for an overnight change. The early data is promising. Hybrid products are seeing 40% better customer retention than pure plant-based alternatives, and they cost just 20% more than conventional meat, not 50 to 100% more like fully plant-based options. The second strategy targets institutional food service, cafeterias, schools, and restaurants. Here's why this matters. In food service, costs are averaged across entire menus, portion sizes are controlled, and crucially, consumers are more accepting of alternative proteins when they're part of a prepared dish rather than a packaged product. Companies like Beyond Meat are seeing three times higher repeat purchase rates in food service compared to retail. Some university cafeterias report that plant-based options now make up 30% of protein sales, dramatically higher than retail market share. The third strategy might be the most transformative, using artificial intelligence and machine learning to create next-generation products. Companies like Notco are using AI to analyze the molecular structure of animal products and identify novel plant combinations that can replicate them more accurately and more cheaply than current alternatives. And then there's cultivated meat, real animal tissue grown in laboratories. While still expensive, production costs have fallen from $300,000 per pound in 2013 to around $50 today. Singapore has already approved it for sale, and more countries are following suit. These strategies are creating a more nuanced market. Instead of trying to convert everyone to 100% plant-based alternatives, the industry is building a spectrum of options, hybrid products for the curious, pure plant-based for the committed, and cultivated meat for those who want real meat without the environmental impact. This diversification is already changing retail strategy. Stores are creating protein sections rather than separating plant-based products, making it easier for consumers to compare options. Restaurants are developing flex protein menus where any dish can be made with conventional meat, plant-based, or hybrid proteins. For investors, this evolution demands a new playbook. The winners won't necessarily be pure play plant-based companies, but those who can execute across multiple protein strategies. Investment is shifting from consumer brands to infrastructure and technology. Venture capital is flowing into fermentation facilities that can produce proteins for multiple brands, AI-driven food science that can accelerate product development, and supply chain technology that can reduce production costs. The fake meat revolution isn't failing. It's becoming more sophisticated. The industry is learning that changing the world's protein consumption isn't about one breakthrough product or technology. It's about building a new protein ecosystem that can meet different consumer needs at different price points. The next decade won't be about replacing meat. It will be about redefining what meat means. And in that redefinition lies the potential for something even more valuable than the next big IPO, a sustainable solution to one of humanity's biggest challenges. Liked that deep dive? Subscribe now to Business Sherlock, where we investigate the real and the fake from the world of business.